Hello everyone, so today we're going to be doing several MCQs uh, to do with genetics. So our first question reads, so you can see uh, from question 1 up to question 5, we have to refer to the list of the terminology below. So 1 is allele, 2 is bivalent, 3 is chromatid, 4 is diploid, 5 is genotype, 6 is haploid, 7 is heterozygote, 8 is homozygous, three, uh, 9 is phenotype. So the first question reads, an organism which has two different alleles of the same gene uh, refers to 1, 2, 2 is option 4, 3 is option 7, 4 is option 9, 5 is option 5. So, one type, one orga an organism that has two different alleles of the same gene is referred to as heterozygote. So the correct answer here is uh, <coughs> option 7. Okay, so if a species is heterozygous, it means that it has different alleles of the same gene. For instance, uh, that species could have, long, uh, could have long hair or short hair. So let's take, for instance, this person is a heterozygous, let's say dominant for, maybe this is height, maybe that tall, okay, which is capital letter T, then they they have a recessive uh, short gene. So they, they have two different alleles on that particular gene. So denoting for different types of alleles. Okay, then question two reads, a description sorry just a minute a description of an organism a description of an organism in terms of what can be seen or measured is one is the first option two is the second option three is the seventh option four is nine five is five so a, a description of what can actually uh, be measured the correct answer is uh <coughs> phenotype so a phenotype that's um option nine okay like you can see over there so our correct answer here is going to be option nine okay actually i think we can highlight this okay so a phenotype is observable and also it has measurable characteristics Three, describe a cell that has two sets of homozygous chromosomes. Describe a cell that has two sets of homo, uh, homozygous chromosomes. One is the second option. Two is the fourth option. Three is five. Four is the eighth option. Five is seven. So remember, we're answering these questions in reference to this list or the terminology so when we when you look at question three the correct answer is actually uh, diploid okay so let us go to question three so a diploid is going to be a cell that has two sets of homologous uh, chromosomes in this case and according to our options that's uh, option four oh referring to the number of course so in this case, uh, that's the one over there. Okay, we have to counter check and make sure. Okay. The next question. <coughs> question four. Describe. Okay, just a minute. <coughs> so describe a cell with a single set of chromosomes. Okay, so remember that the previous question had two sets of uh, chromosomes we refer referred it to as uh, diploid. So it means the one with a single set of chromosomes is what we refer to as uh, haploid, which is uh, option six in this case. Okay, next question. A description. Okay, let's just zoom in. So a description Okay. So 
So question five reads, a description of an organism in terms <coughs> of certain of its genes is a description of an organism in terms of certain of its genes is one is option one, two is option five, three is option eight, four is option nine, five is option two. Okay. So uh, when you look at this particular uh, question, they're actually referring to the genotype, okay? So the genotype here is option five. So here they are asking us what describes a description of an organism, an organism in terms of certain of its genes. So when you look at the genotype, it's the genetic makeup with respect to a particular set of genes. And that's why we actually chose genotype, which is five. Okay. We go to question six. It reads, what is the sex chromosome content of a human egg? One is XX, two is XY, three is X. Uh, 4 is Y, 5 is uh, YY, okay? So the human egg, uh, XX chromosome, you know that um, <coughs> it's actually going to be XX, right? This is when it has inherited, uh, this is after fertilization. But when you look at the sex chromosome content of the human egg, you just have one uh single x okay because the other x has to be inherit has to be cross matched during fertilization where it's gotten from the sperm in order to make a particular a female species okay and that's why we went, we went for this particular answer question 7 a gene such as the one responsible for the tay sachs disease which is a ganglioside lipodosis which kills individuals before reproductive age is referred to as a a recessive lethal gene or oh, sorry one a recessive uh, lethal gene two a sub lethal gene three a complete lethal gene Four, a dominant lethal gene. Five, a per lethal gene. So the correct answer is a recessive uh, lethal gene. So a recessive lethal gene means that that individual is going to, the individual needs to inherit two copies of the defective gene in order to inherit that fatal uh, condition, which is this Tay Sachs disease. So the correct answer here is one. Okay, so we're going to highlight this particular answer. All right, <clears throat> question eight reads, a, a chromosomes align themselves at the equatorial plane of the spindle fiber attached to the spindles by the centromer. What stage of cell division does this statement refer to? One metaphase one only. 2 anaphase 1 only, 3 anaphase 1 and 2 only, 4 metaphase and 1 and 2, 5 metaphase of both mitosis and meiosis. Okay, so uh, during meiosis and mitosis, uh, when you look at metaphase, these uh, chromosomes are coming right at the center. Okay, so you have uh, chromosomes, for instance, at this and and the centrioles that are bringing them close this is the equatorial region so they start to come close to the center like this okay now this happens in both uh, meiosis as well as mitosis hence uh, this is why we chose this uh, particular answer okay next question reads a brown-eyed man marries a blue-eyed 
woman and they have eight children, all brown eyed. eyed. What are the genotypes of all the children of the family? One, heterozygous of the dominant allele for brown eyes. Two, homozygous for dominant allele for brown eyes. Three, homozygous for the recessive allele for blue eyes. Four, some children are homozygous for the dominant brown eyes, while others are heterozygous for both the dominant and the recessive alleles are expressed equally in all the eight children. Okay, so what you notice here is that um, according to this question, all the eight children are going to be brown-eyed. Okay, so you find that the father to these children is brown-eyed, like you can see here, right? So he's got brown-eyed, while the mom is on with blue eyes. But all the children have... Um, brown eyes. So this means that the genotypes of these children is that they're going to be heterozygous of the dominant allele for brown eyes. Okay, so this means that the brown, uh, the gene that codes for the brown eyes is dominant in the father in that they all, he they all inherited it. Okay, in as much as uh, he was cross-matched with, with um, the, the blue-eyed woman, the children still came out to have to all have brown eyes. This means that the heterozygous dominant allele for brown eyes. While well, the blue eyes obviously is recessive. So they're going to have brown eyes dominantly, but they will carry blue uh, a gene for blue eyes coming from their mother. Question 10 reads in rabbits in rabbits the full color. Okay. In rabbits, full color. Oh, before we go to the next question, let's just highlight the answer here. Okay. In rabbits, full color is uh, coded for by C. Chinchilla albino is C C H. Himalayan albino is C H, and albinism is uh, C A. And then uh, they form a series of multiple alleles with dominance of the. In the order given, what are the genotypes of the parents of the following cross wild type to Himalayan that's going to give you half of them being the wild type, a quarter being Himalayan, and a quarter being albino? Okay, so we're just going to go to the drawing board. Okay, just a minute, so we erase this. All right, so uh, what happens is that first we have to write out the full color, which is the, the world type, is going to be denoted by C. The chinchilla is denoted by C, A, C, C, H. Then the Himalayan is uh, C, H. And the albino is just going to be denoted as uh, C A. So what you notice is that um, the dominance order goes like this. The wild type is greater than the the chinchilla. Then the chinchilla is is uh, is less than is greater than the Himalayan and so on and so forth. Okay. So what happens is that given the cross while well, we're crossing the wild type. And the Himalayan, the offspring, they've told us half are going to be the wild type. A quarter are going to be Himalayan and a quarter are going to be albino. <coughs> okay. Let's go to the next page. So what we notice is that when we analyze uh, the species, the very fact that there is the presence of an albino offspring indicates that both parents are carrying an albino allele, okay, which is the CA in this uh, case. So the Himalayan can either come out as um, CH, because that was the Himalayan, we go to the previous page. Okay, so the Himalayan is CH, okay, 
So it's CH, CA because it's carrying uh, that albino. And then the, the word type is a C, but because it's carrying um, an albino trait, it's going to be C, CA in this particular case, okay? So the cross initially is supposed to be C, CA, that was crossed with CH, C, A in this particular case. But the closest you have, because uh, for Himalayan, it can actually be written, uh, okay, so this is the wild type, right? C, C, A with an albino trait. Himalayan albino can actually be written as C, H, C, C, H, C, H, okay? It's going to be done C, H, C, H. So this is the correct order. And when we go back to our options, option two is actually what qualifies for the answer here. Okay, just a minute. Okay. So we highlight this, we go to question 11. And it reads, a blood test for Mr. Banda gave the reactions indicated below. Based on the table, Antisera A shows a reaction. Antisera B does not... Hi, I hope you're enjoying the lesson that my colleague worked on in biology. So on our platform, we have topics, past papers, and tutorial questions as I make this video. So the topics videos allow you to learn the topics from scratch, okay? Now at the end of each uh, topic, uh, let me give you an example of, uh, of maybe carbohydrates, okay? At the end of each topic, videos, uh, you'll be able to assess yourself with the quizzes. These are MCQs based on the exam questions, okay? So which assess your, your understanding, okay? So let me try to see where we could, yeah. So for example, this says choose the incorrect statement, okay? You choose, you'll be able to mark you, okay? That's uh, one way of actually ensuring that you are learning. Then, um, uh, but in addition to these uh, topics, videos, and the quizzes that come after, we also have past papers. We've got a part where we've arranged them according to the topics. Okay. By the time probably you're watching this video, you're going to have over 10 of them, 10 to over 10 topics, because they're already being worked on as I make this. Then you also have other past papers arranged according to the years. Then um, the tutorial questions as well, um, kind of like the quiz uh, questions, but then in video form as well, just to practice each topic. So with this, you yeah, are ready to prepare for biology exams and assessments that come your way, okay? So to sign up, use the link in the description below.